We have details on Bray Wyatt's horror movie. Plus, a former NXT champion undergoes surgery, and a scrapped Halloween Havoc plan has been revealed. It's in the wrestling news right now. Bray Wyatt's next move has been something we've talked about quite a bit. Yeah, this we're all like AEW, Impact, where's the NWA? Better yet, the big screen. The wow, one, baby. <laughs> yeah. The Sam's hair screen, that's right. <laughs> Hollywood bound is our boy Wyndham Rotunda. I, you know what? I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. Yeah, it seems quite obvious, isn't it? When you He's think been about playing it. a horror villain for the last, what, two years? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no brainer. Callison Studios owner Jason Baker, he's the SFX artist who works on The Fiend, uh, has revealed to Metro that he and Rotunda are working on a horror movie, which corresponds quite nicely with a photo that was shared a few weeks back of, of him and Rotunda. On the on, back lot, right? On the back yeah. lot of the LA Warner Brothers set. So here's what we know. Uh, this is what we've gleaned from the interview with, um, with Jason Baker. Uh, the movie they're coming up with is described as a cross between Itchy the Killer Okay, Which is, I was um, not expected to hear. <laughs> yeah, let's talk some Takashi Miike. Uh, let's go. It's cool. the story of a repressed psychotic murderer with the ability to inflict untold levels of pain. There's a, a it's, scene with hooks. A uh, horrendously violent film. A horrendously awfully violent film, but a masterpiece. Just, oh my God. It's, 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 vi it's incredibly beautifully violent. Yeah, but in just the worst way. Yeah. It's, it's oh. uh, So Itchy the Killer crossed with Xanadu, which is a film about a Greek muse opening a roller disco with the soundtrack provided by Olivia Newton-John. I'm all about this. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's make it happen. Let's, you know, crazy murder on roller skates. As long Big as it, disco ball. <laughs> as, long as, as long as Olivia Newton-John does the soundtrack again. I, I think we did a modern take of Xanadu. No, no, no. The trailer will have like a piano, just a piano on its own in an empty field with Ooh. one mic. And it'll be somebody doing a slow version of it like every movie trailer <gasps> these days. Of course. Yeah. No also, if you, compare, if you compare the biggest films of the year's posters, you'll see that they're all the exact same poster. There's like this weird trend in films where you have... The same poster layout, the same trailer layout, it all kind of moves in those waves. But in, anyway... <laughs> That's a shame. Uh, the movie's being filmed in Tennessee, uh, as w where movies like Green Mile, Hustle and Flow, The Fugitive, The Firm, and all the earnest movies have been made. So there is history in Tennessee, uh, among other things. Shooting begins in a fortnight. Post-production uh, set to begin early part of 2022. Metro, uh, when speaking to Baker, Baker said, we're going in a completely different direction with Wyndham Rotunda. It's a whole new thing. It should be fun. Hopefully fans of horror and fans of Wyndham will like it. Well, the thing is, right, if he can go off and reinvent himself in a pretty tough market, but he seems to know all the right people, mm. this, I mean, horror is a huge, huge market, and if he's able to become, you know, a Jason Voorhees level character, if that's indeed the route they're going with it, he's never going to need to wrestle again. No. He's, he's going to be set for life. He's going to be... Even if he hasn't, even if they don't have him talking, if he's just standing there doing this, it could set him for life. <laughs> Just doing that. With a big knife, yeah. <laughs> it's not even a knife. It's, it's just, just waving your arm. <laughs> oh, yes! That's what we do! What if it is a messed up film about, like, a Mr. Rogers style character? What if they oh! do a whole theme thing? Oh! In a roller disco with Olivia Newton John doing the soundtrack. <laughs> uh, let's move to some wrestling news now. A former NXT champ has undergone surgery. Yes, so Zoe Stark, we recently kind of covered this. She got beaten down uh, by Toxic Attraction, and it was kind of a way to write her off after tweaking her knee. Uh, but she took out to Twitter, and they said, took out? She took out to Twitter, <laughs> took out to and Twitter. she posted out to Twitter <laughs> out this thing. Sadly, I tore my ACL slash meniscus due to toxic attack. Here's the bad news for the champs. Surgery went great and I'm already rehabbing. I'll be back better and stronger with three targets in mind. Stark puts the blame on toxic attraction here, of course, as I said, yeah. for, for that injury. So they kind of beat her down and, and then, yeah, they've written her off. But this is good. They're making use of it and, yeah. you know, making it canon. Yeah. Um, um, She'll be back before you know it, but I think what we'll, what we'll get is one of those kind of, we'll just not hear from her for a bit. Mm. And then people will kind of forget that she's even, and then boom, she'll pop back up and it'll be like a big, oh! I realize I don't think I've told Ben Potter that Zoe Stark was even injured. 
Now, oh, no. I got angry with you last time. You did. Now I'm just disappointed. I know. I'll go and tell him after this. I'll go. I'll we'll go. We'll, I'll go take him to to that little coffee place over the road, and I'll go tell him over the coffee. <laughs> Break the news. Break the news <laughs> gently. Uh, recent WWE performance signing, uh, performance center signee Bobby Stevenson, uh, the brother of Gable Stevenson, has a new name. Because why not call him Stevenson? They're named after his brother. What have no. they named him? Can I guess? Go on then. Have they named him Bobby Steve? Oh, how did you know? No. Oh, he's not Bobby Steve, sadly. Wow, okay. Then now I'm all out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> if you had on your cheat cards, Damon Kemp. Damon Kemp. The brother of Roman Kemp from yeah, Capital I was, Breakfast. I was about to be like, he, he sounds like an EastEnders character. <laughs> oh, right, I'm Damon Kemp. <laughs> Damon's just got out of prison. He's coming back. He's coming back to the square. Run. <laughs> he tried to burn down the Vic last time he was here. <laughs> Uh, he put out a tweet saying, the name is David Kemp. I'm going to smash your pub. I'm in your favourite superstore. Coming soon. Uh, WWE officially oh, trained... the accent they give it. <laughs> All right. No, no, it's me, David Kemp. <laughs> Just a huge dramatic intro. Or is it like Snooker Loopy? And he walks down, <laughs> gets on the mic and it's dramatic light and she goes, All right. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be so good make that a thing you cowards uh, Damon Kemp is copyright WWE as of last Friday they did all the trademark uh, bells and braces bells and braces for that so Damon I, just, I, I, yeah, I don't know why you wouldn't want to just go it's his brother I, but. I you know I, I don't know but the thing is WWE they kind of need to do this because they like to own all the rights so at this point yeah, I'm not even surprised yeah, and yeah. I'm sort of used to the WWE naming convention you know names mm. like like Vance and things like that. It's, it's just part of the fun in it now. Trying to find names that people can't Google. Yeah. Although they Google, they kind of come up near the top. They want, yeah, they, 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 they want names that nobody has. They, <laughs> they don't want proper names. I they imagine want there's, Google somebody, there's somebody in Stanford whose entire job is to just come up with new original names. It's a, it's a, it's a wall full of... It's like, uh, well, you've heard of Thomas, but have you heard of Lomas? <laughs> Genius! I thought it'd be like narwhals, like in that episode of South Park. <laughs> oh, they just headbutt the balls yeah. in. Was it narwhals? It was some sea creatures. It's wasn't like it? sea lions or something, did it? Just butting the headballs in. His name oh, is manatees. That's manatees. It, yeah. Damon Kemp. <laughs> Brilliant work. Um, Ruthless Aggression Series 2! Yes. They're finally getting it! I know, now I've only started catching up with season one, so mm. I'm, I'm kind of lucky in the way that I've not had to wait very long, so... Oh, yeah, I just can't wait to see it. I, do you know what? It's it's looking back on it now. Like you you don't you don't know, you don't know the good days until they're gone. No. Um, I you know the ruthless aggression era was actually a lot of fun for most part. I mean you had in amongst there a, a Triple H reign of terror on Monday Night Raw where he just beat everybody and walked around like he was neck deep in yeah. toffee. Uh, <laughs> but then on, on on SmackDown you had like pro wrestling the SmackDown Six. Yeah, you had a lot a lot names. going on, and there were a lot of photographers at ringside WWE. So if you can get some nice higher def pictures up on your website so, you know, we can see. Because the, the one thing about this era is there is very little that isn't like yeah. this tiny little stretched out giant pixelated or there's so many like cool gimmicks and costumes that I want to see up close. Get some pictures online. People just went, ah, oh, we only need a small picture because GeoCities can only hold pictures of 300 <laughs> by 300. So we'll just pop that on there and just, oh, it's livid. Is it, uh, yeah, I'd have thought there'd be more. As you say, there's a lot of photographers ringside. Yeah, I think I think it's That'd something be... that as this goes on, hopefully we will see more of that pop up because there's a lot of like unseen images from the Attitude Era, but there's not many from Ruthless Aggression. And yeah. I'd like to see some of the kind of backstage, like, way jokey shots and... I want a bit of that. Alternate angles on Facebook. Famous moments and stuff. Be nice, that. Uh, series two, uh, starting Monday, November 22nd on The Peacock. When is Juice Robinson's New Japan contract up, Sand Driver? So Juice Robinson was speaking to Sports Illustrated and he said, I'll be a free agent in February. It's a great time in wrestling to show up anywhere and maybe it's the right time for me to spread my wings and fly. No, Juice, don't leave New Japan. You're one of my favorite things uh, about it, Juice. Where, no. Where would Juice go? No, I don't, I don't know. But they're not going to let him. I don't know if they'll let them let him do yeah, the Care but... Bears and they want oh. <laughs> He shoots out juice from his little belly. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Different care bears, oh, isn't it? God. Oh, yeah. Ju- I mean, Juice Robinson, uh, a strong upside on a guy like Juice. Absolutely. He's somebody who has a past with WWE, but I don't feel like he's somebody that's going to go back to WWE. Juice is definitely somebody who's made his name outside of that company, and I feel a little bit in spite of that company, not really seeing what they had when they had him on the books. So mm. I feel like Juice could be, as I said before, New Japan of America could be a very good fit in Impact and we've already seen him wrestle on Impact recently or you know the, the standard response now which is AEW lol so are you <laughs> True. So maybe not WWE then. I don't know if it'll be. I mean, I could see him going back because, you know, he's wrestling. Never say never. Mm. But I I feel the way that Juice kind of left that company and went off and proved himself is more like a, like, you'll never get this back type, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I'm reading far too much into this. <laughs> we'll find out when come February. Pops this up on SmackDown, like, day one. <laughs> I'm Bingleburt Bumberdom. <laughs> nice, my new name. Now, if you back to being CJ Parker, wouldn't you? Oh, of course, you yeah. will, yes. Anyway, come February, the juice is loose about this hoose. Find out Lamar. Uh, we've had Halloween Havoc just the other week. Scrap plan from Halloween Havoc that kind of says that WWE are close to... Connecting some dots on NXT 2.0. Tommaso Ciampa having a chat with Talk Sport. They just wouldn't have to. Uh, just, just yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell them all what it is. This is so, <laughs> so Ciampa chatting to Talk Sport in between adverts for Autoglass, and said Rick Steiner was meant to be at Halloween Havoc. He pulled out last minute. Maybe because I retained, but I won't say that's why. I'd love to be friends with him. I said to Bron, I don't want to meet your dad. I want him to be my buddy. I want us to exchange numbers and whatever Rick Steiner does. He's probably not a big phone guy. I don't know. <laughs> I just want to be friends to him. So flirtation aside from Tommaso Ciampa towards Rick Steiner, uh, Dogface Gremlin nearly at Halloween Havoc. I know. Oh, yeah. Uh, just, yeah. You, uh, With Chucky there you know, as well. When you're talking about, when you're talking about you know, like... Connected dots. They wouldn't have to connect the dots if they just allowed him to be to be to, to have Steiner in his name. Mm-hmm. And then we wouldn't. Uh, oh, just 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 get get Scott and Rick and just have them always just pop up every now and then. Bit of light relief. And then and then and then Bron can just destroy things. How livid would you be if they're like, so Rick Steiner's at ringside. In unrelated news, they just, there's Bron Breaker. They, they don't ever mention the connection. And Rick no. Steiner spends the entire thing going, "This kid looks good. This kid's gonna be a star." <laughs> don't know why you remind of somebody I can't quite put my finger on it <laughs> you just hear from the ring he's fat <laughs> <laughs> that's still I think my favourite Scott Steiner sit down moment like there, there are many including the ring, the ring announcing but <laughs> he's fat and then because they're doing it on an empty sound stage you just hear it gently bounce off the back wall it's like he's fat and then you angle calm down Scott <laughs> give us 60 minutes and we will give you the story of Survivor Series 1997 the documentary Screwed premiered last night you know not one to blow the horn of Cultaholic it was Blimmin' brilliant. Thank you very much. Blimmin' brilliant. We've worked hard on it, Justin, Matt, and I, and and yeah, it's, it's, you know, you might have heard it before, but we've gone into a a hell of a lot of detail, and it's over an hour long, and uh, people seem to be enjoying it so far, so don't miss out. It is a dive so deep, you're going to need a special hand gesture to pull you up from. Matt Stewart on the edit for that, Uh, Justin Henry on the writing, Sam Driver on the words from his mouth. And editing. And editing as well, lest we forget, so... (laughs) Uh, check it out on the YouTube channel right now. Uh, it's a wonderful deep dive. And if you don't do that, you're wrong. Have a lovely day otherwise. <laughs> Stay safe. <laughs> and love you. Bye.